where were you during the great blizzard of 89? Well, certainly all right-thinking people in South Jersey were safe at home. That is, all except for one intrepid State of the Arts producer. We sent Don McGill out in the cold to cover one of the hottest shows in town, the New Jersey Watercolor Society's 50th anniversary exhibition. And he brought back a weather report of another color. While outside the snow fell and the winds buffeted Oceanville's noise museum, inside there was a winter storm of a different sort going on. The drifting snow of the artist's sweeping brushstroke and the transparent wind of the painter's imagination captured the moment as no camera could, demonstrating the incredible power and seductive appeal of watercolor art. And while Old Man Winter appeared to discourage many visitors from venturing out on this day, attendance for the show has been heavy. Crowds come from as far away as New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. Strong evidence of a tremendous growth of interest in the medium as a whole. I think that watercolor has become so incredibly popular in the United States in the last 15 or 20 years that more people are trying it. More people are giving in to that, oh, I always wanted to do watercolors. And so the interest and the attention is there. Art lovers and painters seem to be rediscovering watercolor, drawing it out from the shadow of its more established rival, the oil on canvas. It has always been thought that watercolor was a secondary kind of medium, that it was a way of expressing things as a preparation to oils. So therefore, it kind of took the back seat. But it is not taking the back seat anymore. It is a prime means of stating something. It's a prime means of making a painting. Artist Paul McCormick began his career as an oil painter, but made the switch to watercolor five years ago. He finds this medium more demanding than oils, the technique more of a challenge. The uh, thought process is different. It's more of a direct medium. Um, everything has to be pre-planned. I mean, you can make changes, but not that many. Why is that? Because you can't in an oil paint, you can go over it, you could scrape it off, do it again. Watercolor, you lay it down, it's there. McCormick's portrait, Pamelia, is the star of this year's exhibition. It took three months to finish, and it wasn't until his third, fully articulated portrait that the artist was able to capture exactly what he set out to create. Like many artists who have chosen the watercolor medium, McCormick believes the greater the challenge, the greater the risk. But the ultimate reward makes it all worthwhile. At times, it can be very frustrating. But when you hit it on the final one, you know, it's fantastic. Today, younger artists are using watercolor to explore new avenues of artistic expression. They are redefining the genre, bringing in influences from a number of different fields, including photography and lithography. No longer the dusty art form of the academic landscape and the botanical illustration, watercolor is making inroads into areas once reserved for oil painting, and the results are dramatic. I think there's just a whole burst of, of expression to painting. Paintings are being, are looser. They're more uh, expressive. They're better designed. They're not being held to, well, this is the way the English did it 150 years ago. They're not held to tradition. Uh, there's a lot of experimentation going on in watercolor, and it shows in, in the lively exhibits. The Watercolor Society's exhibition will be at the Noyes Museum through March 26th. For information, contact the museum offices at 609-652-8848.